afternoon, my beautiful people. Welcome back to another Red Devils Africa podcast episode number 12 or number 11. I'm not really sure, but it is the new year. And um, well, after losing to Arsenal in very shocking fashion, Manchester United have got to look ahead to the Wolves game. We've got to put the pain and the frustration behind us and we've got to look forward now. Um, it's an FA Cup fixture against the Wolves side that, um, that I'm not really too sure about. Don't really watch them, so I, I'm not going to have too much to say about them. But as usual, I'm joined by my partners in crime who will help us look ahead to this match. Manchester United have won three and lost two in the last five, and Wolves have lost three and won two in the last five. In fact, I think they lost their first game in the new year to Watford 2-1. Um, there was a red card in that game as well. Just uh, a little fun fact, you know. So, gentlemen, without any further ado, what are your feelings moving into this game? Well, you know, before I want to speak about this game, you know, Welcome to everyone, you know, 13th podcast, by the way, time's flown, you know, we've had much support, but uh, yeah, you know, about this Wolves game, I think it's going to be one of the hardest games of the season, we never do well, really, against Wolves recently, this this is a dog team, like, if there ever was a team that knew how to defend and hit you on the break, is this team, yeah, and that man on our screen, Adama Traore, he's a man in form, with Rahul as well, they just, they're scoring goals for fun, bruv, and... <laughs> You know, I wouldn't be surprised they knock us out. I wouldn't. I actually wouldn't be surprised because I actually rate Wolves a lot this season. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like if there's any team bar Liverpool that we don't want to play, it's this team because <laughs> they also want to play counter-attacking. So it kind of forces us to have to come out in the games and, yeah, it it, it leans in their favour. So it is quite worrying because we saw if a team can figure us out against Arsenal, there would be nothing. So... It is quite worrying going into this game. Mm, and how much do you guys know about their manager? And I know he likes to play counter-attack in football, but how much do you know about him? How long has he been at the club and all I, that sort of stuff? I know oh, wow. since Wolves got promoted and, mm. you know, he's done yeah. fantastically one. He's probably one of the best defensive Wolves managers managed. at the time. Yeah. yeah. And he's probably mm. the best defensive. Like, I think he, if he had to park the bus, this guy is way better than Mourinho at the yeah. moment. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, he's doing bits with uh, with Wolves, I mean, and it's it's like, it's mad. It's actually mad. I hate the way he plays. I hate it. It's just, yeah, yeah. It's just like, you know, if there ever was a team to hurt him, <laughs> it's, this, it's this team. Wolves, I don't want to swear, but yeah, it's this team here. It's Wolves. They will hurt United. Well, yeah. some strong, strong opinions there of, of Wolves. And uh, no doubt what you guys are saying, there is some some substance to it, you know. Do you guys think, you know, looking ahead of this game, do you think United have what it takes to go all the way in the FA Cup? Or is it something that you're just quite not sure about yet and you just need to see a little bit more before you can draw that conclusion? Yeah, you know what, if I'm honest, I think we're out, we out this weekend. I think Wolves are going to kill us off. And I think Ali won't pick the right team, you won't do the right tactics, you won't learn. And I, I just don't see this going our way. Mm. And I can't yeah. even say a draw because you, there's no draw. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I think we're out this weekend as well. I think Wolves will... Like, the owners will be on us to come out. And Wolves are very good at the counter. They did it to us at the beginning of the season. They did it twice to us last year. They just, they've just just got our number. So I think we're going out this weekend. Mm. Well, it's a negative tone to start off the podcast. And understandably so, because this Wolves side... They have been a bogey in our closet. I know I said that against Burnley, but this this one is a real one. Like, they're a real, genuine bogey in the closet of Manchester United. And uh, it's something we just... It's a hiccup in United season over the last few years that we just haven't been able to get over. So, um, with that said, I know you gentlemen don't think we'll make it past, but for for just for the sake of conversation, what do you think this this game and the FA Cup means to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? And Manchester United, how well, big is this this trophy and and this game in particular? Well, if I was Oli, I'd be sitting there thinking, "There's no chance I'm doing anything in the league. I probably won't even get top four now." So I would heavily focus into the FA Cups and the Europa League and any other cup that we are still in. I would heavily focus a good team and put out a semi-strong team to go try and win a trophy because you know at least that's something you can still do. It's available. It's always available if you just keep on winning and going through to the next stage. So I, if I was Oli, I would be prioritizing these cups a lot. Especially the mm. FA Cup, because the FA Cup is one of the big domestic trophies this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, personally, it doesn't mean much to me. Like, I still have a lot of doubts, even if we win this cup. But I feel like 
it would help him because he will he will get a lot of fans on his side if he wins this cup. And you can see he's doing that because you can see the strong squads that he plays in the Caribou Cup. So he's clearly taking the domestic cup seriously, which is what he has to do because there's no way he's making top four. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting time to be a Manchester United fan because there's just you've almost got nowhere to look after the last few results towards the end of the year. I mean, the, the, towards the end of the year, it was a bit more positive, to be fair. But um, it's just it's hard to see a way forward for this Manchester United team. It really is um, with the whole Pogba saga. And I want to get your guys thoughts on that. But with the whole Pogba saga, um, I just think, you know, it's it's just unfortunate. This this club is being run very poorly, and I know we've said that in the past, but it's starting to get more exposed now more than ever, and how thin our midfield is. So, what is your guys' thoughts on the on the Paul Pogba situation, the whole Pogba episode at the moment? You know me, I'm Mr. Pogba FC. You know, my favorite player at United. Uh, I don't blame him for wanting to leave. I think the club should have let him go in the summer. You know, I do believe Pogba is still a professional. And he does love Man United, and he does and does love Oli, and he does love the fans. But I feel like you know this board and you know the way this club is just run is not helping him. Like if I was Paul Pogba, I would be thinking, you know, I probably have the potential, and I probably probably think that I'm one of the best midfielders in the world. And I'm spending my time, my prime years at this United team are not even building around me, not giving me any support, and we're not looking to win any trophies. So are you of the opinion then that he is genuinely? out this time like he's genuinely injured because there's reports coming out that he's going to be out for the next three or four weeks yeah. and that suggests that he's been brought back too early you agree yeah with i that, feel right? like i feel like the fitness stuff you know messed it up i feel like we, again we rushed paul pogba back too early when we didn't have to but i also there's like part of me that feels that pogba is he's definitely injured but i don't think yeah. it's as bad as what is coming out from the club Makes sense, makes sense. Rita, what are your thoughts on this situation? I'd really love to hear your opinion. <laughs> now, I don't want to make any speculations. I don't know, to be honest. It could be that he just wants to leave the club and there's problems within, or he could be injured. So I don't want to make any speculations. But, like, it's, it's rumbled on for too long. He needs to go because it's not healthy for the club. It's not healthy for his career. So he just needs to go. And this board can't force him to be here if he doesn't want to be here. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's testament how, as as Shini said, it's testament how badly we are run. This player doesn't want to be here, and we're forcing him to be here. It makes no sense. Just because we don't want to send, a, we don't want to spend a few bucks. So it, it's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. And like Pogba said, he said, you know what? If this team was building something, and he would love to play for United and win trophies, yeah. But we're not doing it, and we're not helping his cause. Yeah, I think that is the general consensus around United, especially if you're an Oli outer. Anyways, there's this. Uh, airy feeling in the air just the sense that there's there's a there's a desirelessness to actually move forward from the club um and if there is a desire they're not showing it in the transfer market i mean it's hard to fathom the idea that united will sign two or three players in the january transfer window because i feel like that's what we need um so it's just it's a tough one it's a tough one shall we get to the predicted starting exercise then what you guys, yeah. what you think of how Oli will set up? Oh, well, it should come on your screen soon. But yeah. that team there, I think Oli would play against the FA Cup. You know, standard formation: four, two, three, one. I don't really see him. I mean, four, two, one, three. I don't really see him changing much. You know, I think we have no midfielders. And I, I swear, if he plays Lingard, <laughs> I won't have. I will not. I will riot. Like people thought I was fuming in yesterday's podcast. Or oh, oh, they don't know. If, L- if Lingard plays in this game, I'll lose my head. There's no mm. way... He, yeah, there's no way Lingard has to play. I wouldn't even put Lingard on the bench. Yeah, I think with Lingard, the situation with Jesse Lingard is... Um, he hasn't... The reality is, you know, whether whether you're Lingard FC or not, the reality is he hasn't scored or assisted in an absurd amount of time. It's ridiculous. And for me, that warrants... Especially not in the 10 position, that, that warrants that he doesn't start in the team. Um, he's starting in a position for us that's critical for creativity and to, to really give us something going forward. And his stats don't show that he's able to do that for Manchester United. Uh, I think I think Pereira and Mata will be a much better option than Lingard at the moment. Um, so I don't mm-hmm. think there's too many arguments there. Um, it's an interesting team. Sergio Romero in goal, that's, that makes a lot of sense. But Ashley Young on the right back and 
Daniel Williams on the left. Mm. Interesting center off pairing there. I think I the young one makes sense with the experience. Yeah, and I think this is a this is gonna be a dog game. Like it's gonna be a rough game. And I think mm. that because we have City coming up, you know, I think you would yeah. want to rest Papasaka and maybe Luke Shaw because he does like Luke Shaw a lot. Mm, that does make a lot of sense. Do you think any Wolves players get into the side over Manchester United? Definitely. Yeah. I yeah. think Raul, Raul and Adam Adama Traore get into this team. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and the goalkeeper, Rui Patricio. And Nevis. Mm. And Ruben yeah, Nevis. so I think, I think quite a few Wolves players could get into this team. Yeah. It is. That, that's, that's, that's amazing. Wolves <laughs> players getting into a combined 11 with Manchester United. <laughs> Well, I don't like about this predicted starting eleven about Oli though. Like, I don't know if you guys agreed, and we haven't really spoke much much on it yet. But like, uh, you're gonna play the same formation against Wolves, who I can guarantee you will sit back because they sit back against everyone, and they always try to look and hit you on the break. So why would you play this? Why would you play this? Now it's yeah. it's true. He's, he's convinced that this formation works just needs players, which is ironic because he's not signing players. So yeah. Yeah, I'm finding it hard to buy that at the moment because Oli, like you said, has he's, he's not signing players. And he has come out and said he's happy with the players that he has. So, um, you know, this guy must be delusional or something because <laughs> he doesn't have the players to play the system he wants successfully. And I even question the system as well. Um, I think Shanique makes a very valid point. I think if you're playing against a team that's looking to hit you on the break and that's looking to sit back, you can't go on and try and mirror the same thing. You've got mm. to try and go in there and hold the ball. And I think this formation doesn't make sense for that. Uh, yeah. Especially because United don't, as we discussed in the previous podcast, they don't know how to play in the triangles. They don't know how to hold the ball. They don't know how to rotate the ball on and off the ball, run into spaces, all that sort of thing. They don't. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem there's a working system to rotate the ball effectively and create chances in this team, especially not with this person on the middle of the park. And yeah. that's worrying. That's and boring. even if you look at this formation, you can see triangles everywhere. In, in football, there's always triangles. Look, there's Martial, Rashford, Andreas. <laughs> Martial, Andreas, Greenwood. I spelled Greenwood wrong. I just realized that now. My bad. And then even there in the <laughs> middle, Andreas, Matic, and Fred. There's yeah. triangles everywhere. And we just, it's just we pass side to side, side to side. It's like we play, in a, it's like we play rugby. That's what we do at United. We play rugby. <laughs> Progress, Asan. Progress, Asan. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's true. We look like West Brom. Yeah, I think that will change a little bit with Andreas Pereira. Not too much, but a little bit, because I feel like a lot of that is down to Lingard. But yeah, I agree. Um, Nemanja Matic starting is something we can't really fight at the moment because there's just no personnel. Uh, We've just got to accept it. Um, And the fact that he played well in the last game. Uh, By the way, I'm still questioning whether or not Nemanja actually played that well or whether United was just that horrible, you know, looking back on those play ratings. Um, I just, I don't know. Nemanja is just... He's obviously not the guy for Manchester United, but even when yeah, he has a good game, I, I don't know if he's good enough. Like, Message is a player who should leave, but, like, you know. Yeah, he's here. Yesterday he had a good a game, but while he's here, yeah, might as well lose. That was amazing. Like, he, he was okay, really. He had, he had his moments, but he still made a lot of mistakes. So Yeah, he, he just tried really hard. Yeah, yeah, a match yeah, six is good. So definitely, a match six is great. Yeah, uh, what, what would you think of Fred and Andreas playing a bit more advanced than Matic alone in the middle of the park? Do you think like that's too much for him to handle? Well, should yeah. I go? Should like, I go to? Uh, I would predict like how I would line up against Wolves. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Okay, so it should come on your screen just now. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah, it makes like, a lot more sense. That's how I would play. As what much is as he he's attacking to two box it box. Makes his position. Is his position there? Yeah. This is why we brought him from his house to do exactly that. So we might as well try use him and try to get the best out of him. Yeah, definitely. It's just you know I, I think with with Ole he just he he lacks the bravado to play one holding midfield. I think we've seen that. And uh, I know Andreas is not an eight, but he's a player that's been working tirelessly alone in the middle of that park without any real assistance. And I feel like with Fred there something could happen for Manchester United. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to bring your attention to something. Not to focus too much on the Arsenal game, but if you look at any game, really, in United's season, most of United's season last year, I think one thing that Oli needs to change in this game is his reaction times to problems on the field. Like, he, he can't 
do this thing where we're sort of just watching United and it, it, we're almost bored as United fans. We almost want to fall off to sleep and the only thing keeping us awake is the fact that we want to throw something at our TVs because this guy is not changing anything. Um, he waits way too long. Like Mata coming on in the, in the, in the last 10 minutes against um, Arsenal. It's a head scratcher. Why wait so long? To change, to make changes, players it's need time. Because yeah. when he came to the club, he he was proactive in terms of changes. Like when something was wrong, he just changed it. It's like everything mm. he was doing in the first few months, he just threw it away. It, it's very funny. Yeah, and also just on the touchline, it just unless all is four one up against Newcastle, he's not really doing much, is he? Uh, he doesn't seem that vocal, and he doesn't seem that commanding. And maybe I'm being a bit harsh here, but you can see it in his tactics. He doesn't really mm. change much. Uh, throughout yeah. the game, uh, not enough to to influence the game. That is at least. Um, like, it's interesting. It's the manager says a lot about his playing style. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I do want to bring your attention to something. It's interesting. You've gone with pink boots, Jonesy, next to Lindelof. <laughs> yep, yep. In, in your think, back two. Yeah, I think you know. Despite how Jones is so bad, you know, Maguire has been pretty shit as well. You know, I think Maguire needs a rest. You know, and we have Young. If we play Young, you know, there's our captain right there. And Young is a better captain than Maguire, from what I've definitely seen. I think yeah. Maguire needs a break or something. Man. And you have Jones. You gave Jones a five-year contract. You have to play him at some point. Right. Like, you have. Like, surely you can't just give this guy a five-year contract and not ever play. Uh, I would no, play Axel, but Axel is injured. Yeah, that's the thing. I was going to put Axel, oh, but he's okay, currently okay. injured. So we left wow. with Jones. Another injury. Wow. I'm telling you, I'll put this department like at United... It's just it's a disgrace. Another injury. Um, maybe we can talk about that for a bit. It, so Axel's out. Bailey's still out. Delo's still out. Um, Bailey's been well, out forever. Yeah, Bailey's been out forever. So we've only got three options in the middle of the in in the in the centre back pairing, right? Because yeah, we got Jones. Yes, yeah, we've only got three options. Center. That's that's, that's, that's He's also injured. He's also out. <laughs> He's also out. <laughs> Rojo, I, I forget that guy plays for United. I wouldn't have brought him up if you didn't ask. Um, it's it's shocking for Manchester United. It really is. Uh, it's really just a testament to where we are as a club. Mm. So, um, yeah, the, the Phil Jones decision makes sense. I Look, I'm not a fan of Phil Jones. I think nobody is. But you've got to use the players that you have. You might as well use them, especially when you're going through an injury yeah. crisis. Yeah, yeah. The last thing you need is Maguire or Lindelof going down because you're not resting them. Yeah, like, and like I said, we're playing against Wolves, so we can play the style. You can have Matic alone. Yeah, it's not the best. You can have Jones, it's not the best, but Wolves will set back most of yeah. the game, and it's up to United to go take it to, to them and beat forward. them. Yeah. And Andreas, won't... he might not be the best attacking midfielder, but he can do, like, he's not bad. He can do mm-hmm. something. This 4 yeah. 3 will work. It's what got Oli the job in the first place. He went three months on a mad streak, and mm-hmm. he just won't do it. He just doesn't do it. I don't know what has changed. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter what the players are. Ultimately, the system will get you more creativity. But, like, he yeah. won't do it. Like, this club is so broken. The only piece of positivity comes from when you win games. But if we lose games, we're right back into a crisis. Like, it, it's so bad. Yeah, definitely. Well, then, gentlemen, we I would like to bring your attention to the front three, in particular, Marcus Rashford. And I want to preface by saying this. Um, I think... I noticed a problem with Marcus Rashford in the in the in the Arsenal game, and it's it's not too much with the way he plays, but rather the fact that it doesn't seem like he has guidance. Um, it doesn't, and my reasons for saying that is that if you look at how Marcus Rashford played under Van Gaal and even periods under Mourinho, and you could say that he Mourinho was bad for him, it looked like he had a clear plan. Or vision of what he was doing like it looked like he was following some sort of instructions whether the instructions are good or bad is is up for debate but under Ali you don't really know what Marcus Rashford's being told to do because he's almost become a really really selfish player in his decision making and he almost it's like he doesn't really he, he like there's no clear direction is what I'm saying like he's just doing whatever he wants I, mm. I don't know what you guys thoughts on on that but I- what I wonder is how many times does Rashford actually pass a ball in a match? Like, I, act, I genuinely want to know how many times Rashford passes a ball in a game. Like, I remember once, one situation in the Arsenal game where he had, he had no other choice, so he did pass. But I can only remember one pass that Rashford yeah. made in that game. All those other times, pass. when you, Rashford has the ball, makes some other run, or takes a shot out of nowhere. 
Mm. That's Rush's mm. game plan. Make something, take a shot. Make something, take a shot. And it's almost like Ollie's just told him, do what you want. Do, do, yeah, that's the thing. I think Ollie's just like, go express yeah, yourself, play your game. That's the, that's, the, that's the worrying part because I, I feel like Rashford doesn't yet have the IQ to do it intelligently yet. I, 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 I genuinely feel that. Uh, before the Arsenal game, I would have I would have stood up for Rashford and said you've got to let him play the way he wants to play, and I still stand by that. I still think you need to let Rashford play the way he wants to play, but you need to give him parameters to work within, and uh, not just tell him to go express himself. Because then what happens is he tries to make things happen, and it just doesn't work. It looks so forced, especially against Arsenal. You can see it. Yeah. Um, no, I think why Ole has told him that because he gets goals and he does that. I feel like Ole is just focusing more on the, the positive of it than the negative. I feel like he's thinking that Marx's football IQ will grow with time, but at least he's getting the goals, which is something that he didn't get for, for the longest of time. So I think that's why Ole has gone down this route. I, I get yeah. it. I'm a fan of letting players, giving players freedom, but not complete freedom, especially not when we're 2-0 two, two down, mate. Like... You've got to turn it down a little bit at some point, and you've got to have a clear plan. Like, mm-hmm. I think Rashford needs to work on specific techniques and specific mm-hmm. rotations to get past the defenders. Like what Obama Young did against um, against Wembasaka was brilliant. It was planned. You could Super see it. Smart. Yeah, it was smart. I don't want this thing where Rashford looks like a, a player playing player career in FIFA, and they're almost just improvising and trying mm-hmm. to find find goals out of nothing. We don't want to see that. Um, and I, I don't think it's serving him because uh, whilst things have been working out for him in the last few months and he has been on form, I think he could be so much better if he just got a little yeah. bit of guidance. And that's, a little that's, that's, bit of technical yeah, and that's guidance. what I've been saying. Because you look at Aubameyang. Aubameyang will run past defenders like nothing also and score goals. Like Rashford. But when he knew he was coming against someone like Juan Basaka, he made smart passes and he made passes when he needed to. And he was, and that's all he did the whole game. But it worked every single time. Like he knew what he was up against. He knew what was the game plan. And it went mm. to perfection. Yeah, I'll put yeah. my hands up and say I was wrong about that. And I, I, I totally agree now. I saw it after the Arsenal game. And like, you know, I know Rashford thinks he's Ronaldo, right? But like, when I think back on it, <laughs> when I used to remember Ronaldo, Ronaldo is selfish, but I don't think he was Rashford selfish. I feel like Rashford's more selfish. I feel like Ronaldo's got more assists than Rashford has at the similar ages. Ronaldo, the thing with Ronaldo was, I think... With Ronaldo, he was able to play off his teammates a bit more than Rashford is able to, um, which is a selfish thing. But like that's something that does so well. You know, he had freaking sad. Yeah, and he had guidance. Yeah, he, he had guidance. Yeah. That's true. To be honest, but the only blame yeah. the only blame I put on Rashford is that he's not a more intelligent as a player to realize that even if you're told like this, if there's a pass available, make that pass. But then I put more yeah. of the blame on Ole because clearly so, Rashford is doing this over and over and over again, and Ole's not correcting him. Yeah, Ole's mean, not telling him. What and there's no consequences. Saw, what we clearly saw is that Ateta is miles ahead tactically than Ole is after just two games because he was able to recognize a problem and fix it d- d- despite yeah. the, the strength of the player and how the player plays. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, any concerns, any things to say about Martial and Greenwood? Um, they've no been concerns. a bit quiet. I just, I you know, I really hope on that form, this obviously. agenda on Martial takes it easy because, you know, I feel like this agenda is so big that it even could push Martial away from United at some point. And if we have to lose someone like Martial and Greenwood to a bigger team or to any team, oh, United yeah. are done, man. Yeah, the Martial agenda. Like, like if we had to, is, is let's just say in a scenario, we had to get rid of Martial, Pogba and Greenwood because, mm-hmm. like, they are informed players and we kept Rashford and Lingard and all those other, like, by average English players like Lingard. I'm like, oh, what's going on? What is going on? <laughs> you guys slated Pogba, you slated Martial, and now when they're gone, you will see how much more we will struggle. Yeah. I feel like if Martial doesn't play in a United team and if any touch would an injury has to happen to him, it's it's done out here. Attacking with yeah, nothing will happen. We're finished. Because he drops into midfield into the midfield and basically plays another midfielder. So without him, whew, we saw what happened when Rashford was playing up front. Nothing. Yeah. No. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well then, gentlemen, this is the, the more difficult part. Score predictions. Well, let me, you know what, let me go back to the Oli formation. If Oli plays this, I think we'll 100% <laughs> lose. The only way I can see a win is, again, individual brilliance. 
you know, I'm not I'm not even so sure he will play Romero. I, like I don't even know. I feel like Oli will play for a job or something. You know, might go with a mad team. Play, he might not even play Andreas. He might not even play Andreas. Yeah, he might he not even play Andreas. Play. He might just put Lingard in. That's how bad he is. Yeah, as because a he likes he playing Lingard. Play Lingard. Lingard is back into his form. And you know how Lingard is. He's there, like you know, Lingard in every cup generally does well. You know, this is his year. Oh, shut up, man. Get him out. He does so well at the Emirates. So we're gonna play him and hope he can work his magic again. Lingard. So you know what? He, this team <laughs> might be Lingard there for Andreas. We might even see Shaw for Williams. We might see Teheya. We might see Juan We might and we might see James even. Who for all we know? You could go yeah. for the exact same team. Give us the score, mate. Give us the score. What? What do you? What's your score? If he plays this lineup against Wolves, I think we will lose two one. I think the only way we win this game is individual brilliance, and I think that uh, relies specifically on Andreas, Martial, Fred, and Greenwood. Yeah. And Rashford, I would say. And Rashford, yeah. Rashford. You know, Rashford can pull a goal from nowhere also, now and then. Yeah. No, I agree. I think there's no way you won't play the formation because Ole is Ole. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Maguire will play. I think he'll make a lot of mistakes. So, part of me is tempted to say 3 1 Wolves, but I feel like there's too much. So, I'm going to go 2 1 Wolves. Also, two one wolves. It seems like a unanimous decision over here that United will lose this one. And uh, I must say, from an objective point of view, it's hard to defend that sort of thinking. It really is with United and the season they've had, inconsistent FC coming up against a Wolves team, the bogey team in the FA Cup. It's uh, it's there's almost a, a, an ominous feeling about this game that, you know, United will just lose it because it's Wolves. And uh, I'd like to know what your guys' thoughts are. So, again, in the comments down below. Gentlemen, anything you would like to add on? Uh, yeah, so I was just going to say, like, okay, I'm back on my my formation of what I would put out against this Wolves team. Like, if Oli mm-hmm. had to play this 4-3-3 attacking and he played semi decent and he changed yeah. it, he changed the formation, he got out of his stubbornness, he went back to this. And even if we lost, I would I would be happy. I would, I would still be happy. I'll be like, you know what? He changed it. He went back to 4 3 It's what we wanted to see as fans. If we played these guys, yeah, I'll be like, that was the right team selection. I had no faults with it. So that that's what I think Oli has to do. Do I think he will do it? Not a chance. I, I want to ask you a question. Would yeah. you rather have Oli play this formation, United have a great game and lose 3-2, or Oli play his formation, Wolves miss all their chances and United win 1-0? No, I'd rather play 4-3-3 and lose on a good note. Because then at least I can see he did something. And he's freaking, like, hopefully he'll carry it on. However, if he's like, let's just say, you know, he played 4-3-3, he lost. And then he went back. And then I'm like, oh, what now? Now, come on. He didn't <laughs> give it a run. Yeah. He didn't give it a run. Man. I can see that happening, Rita. Are you in agreement about that? I'll ask you the same question. Yeah, I think it's a difficult one because... Ultimately, we want to progress and win the FA Cup, but I agree that we want to see something different because that 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 progress and when going to the next round doesn't help us going forward in the future. So, yeah, I'd also prefer that we play football for God's sakes, and even if we lose, it's all right. Interesting. And uh, what I, I was like going to say is, if he did play yeah. the four-two-one-three uh, and he did scrape a one-nil win, it's just back to square one. You know, we're going to have hope again. We might win the next game and then lose again and then back. You know, it's just, it's just how it is with United. Yeah, this, this Oak is going to play this formation until he can get Madison and uh, Reese, what's his name again? Declan Rice and play Declan <laughs> Rice with <laughs> Tom and apparently think that midfield is good enough to win the league. But anyway, we'll see. Yeah, look, I prefer pasta, not rice. So, anyways, after losing to Arsenal in shocking fashion, can Manchester United go on? and beat Wolves in the FA Cup. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Get in the comments down below. Get your opinions in. Please do engage. Please do smash a like in the video. It's been a short show. Hope you're having a great New Year's celebration, by the way. Wish you all the best. And thank you, my beautiful people. I will see you again soon. Peace.